Infectious diseases. Research. Medicine. Health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. Now, the Asian longhorn tick made its appearance recently in the United States and has since been found in a number of states. Now, the emergence of these ticks represent a potential threat to livestock, wildlife, and human health, according to experts. In a new study published in Emerging Infectious Diseases, researchers say the infestation in Staten Island, New York, is far more advanced than previously known. Well, joining me to talk about the Asian longhorn tick and the new study is Associate Professor in the Columbia University Department of Ecology, Evolution, and Environmental Biology, Maria Duke Wasser, Ph.D. Professor Duke Wasser, welcome to the show, ma'am. Thanks for having me. You bet. Well, let's go ahead and start with a little background on the tick, uh, the Asian longhorn tick. Where is it normally found or where is it native in the world? So this tick is native to East Asia. It's been found in China, Japan, Korea, and as well as Australia, New Zealand, and some of the Pacific Islands. It's the first time really that's been found in the Western Hemisphere is this occurrence now in the U.S. In, starting in 2017. Now, what known pathology for humans or animals is this tick implicated in? So this tick has uh, has been found transmitting several pathogens. One of them uh, is the, the most severe is called severe fever with thrombocytopenia syndrome (SFTS), and that's a very severe uh, hemorrhagic uh, disease that's been found in China. And then there's other diseases such as tuberculosis that's transmitted to cattle that can also uh, be severe. But one of the main uh, Problems with this tick has also been the fact that they just take a lot of blood, and so they just impact the livestock uh, by by just the amount of blood they take. Uh, so far, it could transmit the pathogens that we know here, that the ones that are typically transmitted by black-legged tick, but we still don't, uh, we still haven't found any of them in the ticks that we have tested so far. Okay, and, and you mentioned that it arrived in the United States quite recently. Um, how many states have seen this to date? So today, I, I believe it's about nine states or to nine ten. I don't have the final count, but something around that er, that number. So it's from it's in the east coast and up to Tennessee um, to the north and several of the northern states. So New York State and Virginia, I would say, and New, New Jersey have been the most affected. Okay. Now, do we know how it found its way here? So we thought it probably came on livestock. Uh, there's been a uh, quarantine animals that uh, they found the ticks on these animals. They quarantined and they killed the ticks before. But uh, this year is the first time that it was found in an animal, a sheep, that hadn't traveled. So we know that it's being found locally. But it probably made its way in, in a sheep or some other animal. Okay. Now, for the public, um, if they wanted to recognize this, what's its appearance compared to, say, the very common black-legged tick, uh, the vector for several bacterial, viral, and parasitic pathogens. So it's uh, not that different. So the size will, you know, depending on, on, it's a little bit bigger, but, you know, the ticks have different stages, so that is not a determinant. And it, it doesn't look like, you know, the black and the red uh, that it's been described for the black-legged tick. It's more like uniform and reddish, and it has shorter mouth parts, but to the naked eye, you wouldn't be able really to tell it if you're not, you know, well-educated. So it would look kind of similar. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and switch gears to the study. Um, Professor, can you describe the study and the methods employed? Sure. Yeah, we're doing a thorough study of tick-borne diseases. Our main goal is to study the black-legged tick, you know, the vector of Lyme disease and others. And so this was a little bit of a surprise to find this new tick. So we've been sampling ticks in New York City if, since, since 2017, and the way we do this is we we sample with a cloth, basically. We drag it along the, the, the ground, and we pick up ticks that way. 
And so we have another study coming up with a description of the black-legged ticks in New York City, and most of the ticks were found on Staten Island. So that's where, in 2018, we focused our study on Staten Island. So we collected them by dragging uh, that I described, and then also on animals. So we sampled mice, birds, deer so far. And, and then, so, so that's how we encountered this, this new tick, as well as the other two ticks that are have been found before, the black-legged tick and also the lone star tick, which is also, uh, it's an American tick, but it has also has expanded in its distribution. So what were your findings? So we found this, uh, this new tick in uh, about half of the parks we sampled. We did 13 parks in, in 2017 and 32 total parks in 2018. And then we found them in 14 out of 16 deer that we, we, they were anesthetized and we were able to test. And then we also collected ticks in people's backyards. And so out of 135 backyards, in five of them we found this new tick. And we also, the, we did not find any on birds or mice, which was sur somewhat surprising because the ticks were there, but they were not attaching to the mice, like the black-legged tick loves to be on mice. Mm -hmm. But we didn't find them at all. And that's, uh, overall, it has never been found on, the, on mice in the field. Now, as a scientist, how concerned are you about these findings? Well, we're quite concerned. You know, every time you have a new vector, uh, we've had that for mosquitoes quite a few times, but never for ticks before. So we don't know what the, the potential implications are, and this tick is capable of transmitting many of the diseases we have here. So luckily, we haven't found any, and so we need to keep studying to make sure that's the case. There's a lot of concern with animal health because it seems to prefer to feed on animals, so for dogs and cats and, and you know, and, and livestock in general. And the other concern we have is that this tick tends to be on grasses, even very short grass, like on the sidewalk where you don't find the black like a tick. You know, we tell people to be careful when there's leaf litter in forests. So that's our public health messaging messaging for, for that. But people will start encountering these ticks all over. So they need to understand there's different types of ticks. So it's important that uh, they recognize that. And the risk is higher, of course, if you're going to have them in, 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 your, in your lawn, potentially, than right. compared to the black-legged tick. Right, right. Um, ju just one last thing, and I forgot to ask you earlier, is we call it the age and longhorn tick. What's the genus and species? It's called Hemophysalis, and the species is Longicornis. Thank you. Okay, um, Professor Duke Wasser, any final thoughts on this? So I encourage people to learn more about the different species of ticks and the diseases they transmit. Now we don't just have the black-legged tick. We have three, actually four ticks, if you include the dog tick. So we need to really understand that these are different ticks found in different places and transmit different diseases. And I just wanted to mention that we have an app. It's called the Tick App, and it's free. And you can download it and learn more about this and also send us a picture of the tick if you're interested in learning more about the different types of ticks there are and, you know, how to deal with them. So I feel we, we need to become more educated, unfortunately, and, of course, we need to keep trying to find ways to control these ticks. Excellent. Well, I'll link to the study on the website when this podcast is published. And I want to thank you, Dr. Maria Duke Wasser, for sharing your study, your time, and your expertise, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure.